Hey YouTube, Crazy Cycling Channel here, and today I want to talk about tools to take when you go cycle touring or bike packing. And I've basically split this into three different categories. Here on the left are tools which I think are absolutely essential, and I wouldn't go touring without them. In the middle are some tools which I think vastly increase your capabilities for very little additional weight. And then on the right are some of the things that I would think about taking if I was going on a long-term tour or somewhere really remote. But my experience with cycle touring has mostly been to Europe, where I wasn't really that far from civilization. So I'm going to be focusing mostly on this section here. I'll give you some of my thoughts on what to take if you go long-term at the end but there are probably some people on YouTube who are actually more qualified to talk about that. But first of all, let me talk about what I think is absolutely essential, starting off with chain lubricant, because this is the number one best way of preventing issues with your bike. If you don't lubricate your chain regularly, you can actually destroy your drive train surprisingly quickly. And I've done this before, so I have firsthand experience with this. This is wet chain lube, which is one of your options. You can use wet chain lube at any time, but it's more suited to using in really wet weather. In general, I would actually probably take a dry lube with you. And the reason for that is that dry lube doesn't attract dirt and grime nearly as much. And since it's quite difficult to clean a chain, especially a greasy chain without special degreasers, um, you'll just have much less mess to deal with. The dry lube probably needs to be applied every day, maybe every other day if you're touring. With the wet lube, you can probably get away with every week. But number one way of preventing issues is keeping your dry train lubricated. And it's also probably something that's quite easy to overlook. Number two on the list is a pump of some sort. This here is the Topeak Mountain Morph. It's quite a big pump, but it will give you lots of capabilities. You can also get a small mini pump or a CO2 inflator. But the problem with CO2 is that if you do that, you will be limited by how many CO2 cartridges you have. And I don't know how much control over the inflation you have with a CO2 cartridge. I, I imagine you do, but I've never actually used one. But I would personally go with an old school pump. And obviously you can use that to inflate your tires, but more importantly, you can use that as part of your puncture repair kit. And in order to repair punctures, you need either an inner tube or a valve repair kit like this one. And I would personally probably carry both. A repair kit like this will let you fix minor punctures in an inner tube. Inside this, you have some patches, some vulcanizing compound and some sandpaper. And they work really well, but if you get a big slash, you won't actually be able to fix it with a repair kit. So I would always carry an inner tube as well. They are quite heavy, but it's probably one of the most likely things to go wrong with your bike. And it just gives you a lot of peace of mind. And then I'd carry the puncture repair kit just in case I had another puncture or something like that. If you have tubeless tires, the puncture repair kit won't really do you much good but I would still carry an inner tube just because it's possible to have punctures in your tires that are so big that the sealant can't seal it. So both of these, I think, are essential pieces of kit. Sometimes when you have a puncture, you will need tire levers to get your tire off or back on. Some people are really good at doing that without tire levers. I'm not good at that, so I would always carry tire levers either dedicated ones like these or ones that come as part of a multi-tool, which is the next most important tool in my opinion. My multi-tool is the Topeak Hexus X and it does have tire levers. They're smaller than these dedicated ones, but they're pretty strong. I think it's some sort of a glass reinforced polymer and I'd be happy just carrying those. But if your multi-tool has really bad tire levers, I'd carry some dedicated ones. But in any case, a multi-tool is probably the next most important thing to carry with you. And the main reason for that is because of the Allen keys. A set of Allen keys will allow you to take apart most of your bike 
and also just maintain and adjust a lot of it, especially any sort of loose nuts and bolts, uh, loose headsets, loose crank bolts, mudguard bolts, um, you know, bolts on pannier racks, anything like that. Um, Multi-tools do vary with the other tools they come with. The, multi the um, Allen keys are the most important, but another tool that I think is really good to have and I would almost consider essential is a chain tool. And the reason for that is if your chain breaks, you can actually take out a link with the chain tool and shorten your chain and put it back together. So that can get you out of a pinch. You can also carry a spare quick link, but the problem with that is depending on how your chain breaks, you still might need to take out a link. So you still might need that chain tool. So I'm personally not convinced a spare quick link is that useful. Also, if you keep your chain well lubricated, the chance of it breaking is pretty low. Another thing that this multi-tool has, which I think is really useful, is some spoke wrenches or spoke keys on their own. That's really good if you somehow bash your wheel really hard and it becomes untrue. You can kind of um, temporarily fix it by playing with a spoke tension. So a set of spoke keys is really good for that. There are different sizes. I think this is two different sizes here. Um, but one might also be a tubeless valve tool. I'm not really sure. There's also a gap on this side here. But in any case, you obviously want the size that fits your bike. And that alone can get you out of some difficult situations. But if you have a spare spoke, then you can also replace broken spokes. So that would sort of be the next level from just having the spoke wrenches. And this particular multi-tool has some other things as well. It has some Torx keys and it has a screwdriver. And to be honest, I don't even think a screwdriver is essential. The only thing I can think of on a bike that would use that is the adjustment screws on old derailers and things like bells as well. But it is good to have that and most multi-tools do include that. The other thing that I think is essential is a knife. I have a couple different options here. A Swiss Army knife comes with a knife blade or an open L knife, which is a locking knife. I think the open are better knives, but you can actually have problems with locking knives. They're not allowed everywhere. For example, I think the Eurostar trains between the UK and France do not allow locking knives. And technically you can't have one in public in the UK without a good reason, but I would argue that cycle touring is a good reason, but a knife has so many uses. The main one is going to be your food prep, but anything you need to cut, you can do with a knife. Those were basically the essential tools. It's not really a lot, but you do have some heavy things here, especially the inner tube, um, a pump, but you can get a smaller one. And even the, the chain lube is quite heavy and the multi-tool, but... You can get smaller multi-tools as well. You'll just have to give up, give up some of the capabilities of this one. And I would personally get something a little bit more capable. Now I'll move on to things which I don't think are completely essential, but which I think will make your tour a lot better, especially if you know how to use some of this stuff. And the first thing is actually missing because I couldn't find it earlier, but that is a spare spoke. And I talked about the spoke wrenches on your multi-tool, but if you break a spoke on tour, having a replacement will allow you to fix that and, and keep going. Even if you can't get the tensions quite right, you'll at least be able to fix the wheel. There are also spoke repair kits. I think it's called the uh, fiber fix spoke kit, and that uses a flexible either Kevlon, Kevlar or carbon fiber um, material to replace spokes. And that's probably the ideal solution because that will work for any spoke. And you can thread that through the hub behind the cassette. If you don't have that, you would first of all need to carry the spokes for all the different locations. So the front, non-drive side rear and drive side rear. And if the drive side rear breaks, which is the most likely to break, you actually can't get the spoke in without taking the cassette off. And 
As I already said, if you carry a spoke, you need a spoke wrench. If your multi-tool doesn't have that, you can carry a dedicated one like this, but it will add a bit of weight. If you need to take your cassette off, you could use a cassette tool like this, but the problem is you need some way of turning that and you need a chain whip and that just gets really heavy. So a lot of hubs, you can actually take them apart and get the entire free hub body out of the way with nothing more than a set of cone wrenches like these. So in my opinion, these are really good to carry. They don't weigh very much. They don't take up much space. They don't even cost very much. And this will give you a lot of capabilities. So as I was saying, one way, one reason is because you can take your free hub off and that will help get your cassette out of the way and put that spare spoke in place. You'll obviously want the sizes you need for your hub. I think a lot of hubs use 15 on one side and 17 millimeter on the other. I'm not actually sure on my hubs. So before I go on tour, I'll need to check that. But if your hubs can be taken apart that way, this is a really good way of having the capability of taking your hubs apart basically and you're getting your cassette out of the way. Some hubs need a Allen key to do that and I'm not as familiar with those. so. This might not work for every hub. The other good thing about cone wrenches like this is that you can also tighten up loose bearings. So if you have loose ball bearings in your hubs, they can loosen over time and you can use a set of cone wrenches to tighten them. And even the um, cartridge bearing hubs can get loose. Just the little caps can get loose and that can cause your wheel to be loose. And that can often easily be fixed just by tightening with a set of cone wrenches like this. The next thing is just some miscellaneous sort of parts and bits. So some sort of a tape. Um, a lot of people take duct tape. I don't really like duct tape. I don't think it really sticks very well. But I would take some electrical tape because you can use this for a lot of things like fixing a water bottle cage, fixing your handlebar grip tape. You can also use it for taping things together, protecting your frame, uh, anything like that. I think some electrical tape is really good. And also some zip ties. Zip ties can be used for almost anything. It's, you know, tying things together, attaching things to your bike, fixing a broken pannier rack, anything like that. I didn't include these as essential, but this category here is stuff that I think is, is pretty much essential. It's just, I wanted to just distill it down into what I think you absolutely need over here. And then the next thing is some sort of a multi-tool. And you could replace your knife with a more capable multi-tool out of these four choices here. A small Swiss Army knife, a big Swiss Army knife, a Leatherman, and an open L. If you can carry a lock knife, you can carry only the Leatherman and have all the capability you need. So the Leatherman still has the knife, which is the most important part, but it also has a pair of pliers. And I would say this is the second most important tool. This allows you to just grab things, manipulate things. You can use it to hold bolts, uh, nuts and bolts, grab hot pans, anything like that. It's a really good multi-purpose tool. And what I like about the Leatherman is that it includes the wire cutters as well. And that can be a bit of a lifesaver, especially if you need to cut something like a spoke. And this is the Leatherman rebar. It has some other useful tools as well. A selection of screwdrivers and all, which I use quite a lot, good for scraping and cleaning things. There is a metal file here, which I could see being useful. Actually, I think I used this once. If you have a broken tooth on a chain ring or something like that. You can get it out of the way with the metal file. Um, you know, Phillips screwdriver can always come in handy. A can opener, that might be handy for cooking. And a wood saw, which probably isn't as necessary, but might be good for a campfire or something like that. So I personally really like this Leatherman rebar. The only thing it doesn't have is a pair of scissors, but your knife blade can substitute for that. If you can't, carry a lock knife, you could use a big Swiss Army knife like this instead. This is the handyman, it still has pliers, not as capable, and the wire cutters don't really work, but you get the knife blade, you get the metal file, the wood saw, um, 
and a pair of scissors, which is a bit of a bonus as well. And that's good for cutting threads and fabric, things like that. But those are some options. Um, so I guess what type of a knife or multi-tool you carry is up to you. But the most featured one here is the Leatherman, and that's the one I would try and go for. And those are basically the tools that I think are, are pretty much essential for a bike tour or bikepacking tour of you know most lengths if you're you know close to some sort of civilization especially the stuff here on the left but even the stuff on the right it really won't add that much and if you consider that you only you can take those out and only use this you know that's not that big of a toolkit now it's totally different if you go on a self-supported like round the world tour or something like that or if you go to, I guess, a less developed country where you might not have, have access to the same level of bike parts and bike tools and things like that, and then you'll have to carry more yourself. And like I said, I haven't done a tour like that. So this is just some of my thoughts. And this isn't a complete kit of tools here either. But the main thing to think about then is your spare parts. So I've got some things here. You'll probably want to take some spare brake pads, depending on your brakes. If you have disc brakes, get the right pads for your discs. If you have rim brakes, get the right pads for your brakes. Uh, also, things like a spare chain, potentially. I'm not showing it here, but the other main thing would be spare cables, gear cables and brake cables. And then I guess the last thing would be things to deal with bearings so that would be potentially some spare bearings for like your headset a spare bottom bracket spare wheel hub bearings that sort of thing but you really get into things that are less likely to fail and more difficult to do out in the field for example if you have cartridge bearings on your wheels you really can't service them without a way of pressing those bearings out so any spare part you carry you will need to take the tools to deal with that as well and just sort of balance what is most likely to happen, what spare parts you want to carry, whether you have the tools and skills to deal with that. Um, one thing that I already touched on earlier, which is kind of likely to happen, I mean, not likely to happen, but what you might need to do is to take off your cassette and take your hubs apart. With the tools here on the left, you can basically take everything apart on a modern bike except for a bottom bracket and a wheel hub. And even then you can take some of them apart. So to take apart a bottom bracket, you will need a bottom bracket tool or you could probably take it apart with a big pair of um, these water pump pliers. So this is going to add a lot of weight, but if you can take a big pair of pliers like this or an alternative like a pliers wrench or a crescent wrench, something like that, you'll be able to take bottom brackets apart. The thing is, what are you going to do then? If you don't have the spare parts, you won't really be able to fix anything. But this will add a lot of capability. And then, as I was saying earlier, and I think I got off topic a bit, the other thing is cassettes. So at the beginning or earlier, I said that you can take a lot of hubs apart using cone wrenches, but if you need to get your cassette off, you'll need a cassette tool and a big set of water pump pliers like this will be able to turn that cassette tool, but you'll need to be able to hold the chain in place, uh, the cassette in place. And normally you would use a chain whip but you can, in a pinch, potentially get away with just wrapping your chain around a some sort of a cloth and then jamming it somewhere and then getting it off that way. But this together will allow you to take a cassette off and the water pump pliers on their own will probably allow you to get a bottom bracket apart. And then it's just a, a case of what spare parts you carry to go along with that. I'm showing the pliers wrench here just as an alternative. It's an alternative to carry to be able to turn that cassette tool. 
but this is really a lot heavier and I think less specialized, more specialized. So I wouldn't actually carry this with me. I'd rather go with a water pump pliers like this or even something like a big pair of locking pliers like vice grip, something like that. But those are kind of some of my thoughts of how I would think if I went on a long tour. And as I said, my experience is mostly with this stuff here. So hopefully this helped you to a certain extent. Uh, I know there's a lot of other resources out there about tools. I just thought I'd sort of add my thoughts to the mix. You should always go with the things you know how to fix as well. And some things are just much less likely to happen. I mean, the, the most likely things to happen are to get a flat tire or some sort of a puncture. The second most likely, in my opinion, would be to have your wheel bearings loosen up, which is where the cone wrenches come in. And the third most likely, in my opinion, is a broken spoke. And everything else is just a lot less likely and also potentially a lot less catastrophic. But you could prepare for that by taking some of those spare parts and bigger tools. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate everyone watching these videos and I hope you consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks and have a good day.